band that recreates ABBA. They're appearing at the Moore Theater tonight. That's and, amazing. And, you know, Spike said people just don't admit it, how much ABBA they know. Well, you you think you're embarrassed at your SAT scores? Where do you uh, where do you figure out how much ABBA you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you put it away like a bad car accident? Really? But look at me. <laughs> they start busting into Fernando and Mamma Mia. You'll know all this stuff. And you'll, and you'll, be, you'll be surprised. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, see? Is this them? Oh, this is really Abba. Wow, you could have lied. This vocal group is coming in this morning. They're going to yes. do this? Yes. Will they do this song? Black. Were you fortunate enough to be born too late for ABBA? <laughs> Very much so. But I, but I, I, I was right in time for Ace of Base. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mitch Hedberg. Uh, we'll be right back. Mitch, can you hang a bit? Sure. Bob Spike and Joe returning with comedian Mitch Hedberg, who is, you know, one of the two great things about this job. Uh, one, you don't have to be that smart, as evidenced by our SAT score. Right. And two, you get to meet some people you've admired and, and get a, a sense of them in person. And I'll tell you, Mitch, uh, interesting, just fascinating. You're you're uh, a little rock star-ish. I haven't had time to wash my clothes, you know. You have a little edge to you. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, uh, say, yeah. But intellectually, uh, right on top of things, even though, like Mitch said, he loves to drink, you're a, you're a whiskey guy? Yeah, yeah. My job has kind of led me into uh, drinking just because, you know, I, it's to the point now where if I, I don't have a drink before the show, it's no fun anymore. I mean, it's, I'm not addicted, though. I hate to sound like that. But. No. It's just more of a uh, join the party vibe, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And at the same time, Mitch, you know, wouldn't have a child because he knows he's on the road, and he wouldn't want to leave a child on. And so he loves the road. You love the road. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to sound cliche, but the road is my baby. That's something. <laughs> That's cheap. Do you are you <laughs> are you on the road pretty constantly? You must. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, you're yeah. in so, such demand. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely stay, I stay out there a lot, and uh, it's, it's, it's. Uh, I've been doing a lot of colleges, like I was talking. I want to finish. You know, the thing about the colleges, that's kind of correlates with the drinking. They, they don't. I'll bring a bottle of wine to the college show, and then this this eighteen year old girl has no problem com coming up to me and saying, "You can't drink that here, man." I, I have no idea how an eighteen year old girl <laughs> has a, can tell a man that he can't have a drink. It's so bizarre, man. I guess in the colleges there's no liquor policy or something yeah, like that. Some of them, but, yeah. Yeah. For eighteen, of all all the places, because you know I think college kids. Should, I, so I hope there's. That's why I'm going to try to develop a, uh, a, a time release alcohol so they can <laughs> drink, and then when it comes in, it starts to affect them as the show goes on, and they start laughing hard. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Is an, uh, an audience with a few drinks in them is yeah, 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 they're know. more pliable. Is, is that you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's you know, that's what a lot of comedians say. Hey, have a couple drinks. This stuff is funnier. But it's true. Just people just laugh harder and louder, and they stop looking at their significant other to see if they should laugh. They, they just the booze tells them they can laugh. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you need your wife's permission. Right. For, if you're it's right. Okay, honey. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. You've seen that before. I'm sure. right. I live that. So and now, do you, being a fan of the road. You, I assume, uh, comes across your desk or your cell phone, or however you stay in touch when you're on there, the internet or whatever. You have to decide which cities you want to. How do you like compare cities one against? An, do you have favorites, or do you like a wide variety? Do you like being in a little tiny town followed by a big metropolitan city? Or? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think. Uh, well, the weird thing is, uh, a lot of times a show I mean, is, is on cool on the mic. Right? Yeah, you're good. Is uh like say like San Francisco or, or Austin, Texas. There's you know. Or Seattle, for that matter. They're supposed to be, you know, really cool, aware cities. And sometimes you can have a show in a town like that that the people, they're just not getting it. It doesn't really happen here. I actually have great shows here. But in, in a town like Other that. Other towns like this. And then you go to a small town that's supposed to be, you know, for lack of a better word, rednecky. And then, and then you go and, and, and they love it, you know. So I, maybe that's a start for entertainment things. So, so I like to go to the smaller towns a lot. I think, so I think you're I, like a missionary, a, a comedy missionary. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just that I just don't wear a robe. How about? Of crowd size, Mitch. Giggles tonight. It's a smaller room, which, by the way, will be packed. Call five two six. You better get your uh, tickets now. You'll pack them in. How do you feel playing a small comedy club like that as opposed to a big college auditorium? Oh well, you know, I, I love I love the small room. I, I have to admit, because it, it's just. 
You know, it's the intimacy thing. The, the theater, but I, I'm shooting for the theater. I want to, I want to do just theater only, just for a while. Just try, but you know, it takes, it takes a while. It takes a, you have to get a little more famous than I'm. I have to get on VIP or something because I did. I just, <laughs> VH1. I, I, or VH1, yeah. Man. VIP with with uh, what's her name? Yeah, Pam. Yeah, Pamela. But but I mean, I, I think the comedy club. That's the thing. After these colleges, after a while, you kind of long for the comedy club vibe, the whole uh, intimacy and and the, and just the whole thing of it. I, I love it. You know, I, I people tend to laugh better when they got two. Two knees stuck on their back, you know. Like, what's it gonna <laughs> <laughs> happen tonight? I giggle. By the way, you were in uh, a movie uh, made by Cameron Crowe. I had a little scene in that. It was actually bigger when he made Little it, Hero. but he, he cut it out. Yeah, Cameron Crowe. Almost Crow. famous. And I saw the lady from Heart, his wife down there, and everything. Nancy and Wilson. That's Nancy, right. Yeah. Uh, you in the movie? Yeah. Mitch Hedberg smokes fake pot with Peter Frampton. That's right. Yeah, and, and uh, that, what I say is, you know, that's as cool as smoking real pot with a guy who looks like Peter French. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that way more. <laughs> did you talk? Did you get a chance to chat with Peter? Oh yeah, I yeah. did, but I was a little afraid to talk to him because he's, you know, he's kind of a musical legend, and I don't really know his music. I was just a little. He was a little before my time, and uh, uh, that's why I was scared to talk to him. I didn't want him to know that I didn't know his music. So when, when you meet a legend and you don't know his body of work, you have to divert from that fact. You know, you got to right. say like, "Hey, Peter Frampton." Do you like toast, too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as do I. It's warm and crispy. <laughs> and a perfect place for jelly to lay. <laughs> That's why I just try to get him off track. And then I go, hey, I got to go, man. See you. Right. Don't ask me about that album because I didn't hear it. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you like uh, professional sports as you're on the road? Do you go, like, would you want to go to a Mariners game? Sure, you? yeah. I'd love to go to all the stadiums. I, you know, that's one other cool thing. You know, you get to see some stadiums. I, I, I even was at the Enron Stadium before the collapse. But, you know, really? I, I was in entire yeah, Houston. No, yeah, Houston, Texas. But, yeah, I like the sports, man. But, you know, the thing is, I don't really follow the sports. And when you're a man, people automatically assume you follow sports just because you're a man. You know, I'm not that into sports. I mean, I like Gatorade, but that's about as far as it goes. But, <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, if I had athlete's foot, my first reaction would be, that ain't my foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Mitch, uh, thank you so much. I know you had to go, and uh, we appreciate you stopping in. Mitch Hedberg, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Buddy. Mitch Hedberg is not only one of Giggle's favorites, he's also a favorite of David Letterman. Makes regular appearances on The Late Show. We're honored to have him back on our show as well. Welcome back to The Bob River Show. Mitch Hedberg, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm I'm very good. I've been on a long tour. It's it's my PO box is stuffed to the gills, man. I got to get home and empty that thing because So you uh you say you haven't been home for a while? No, I've been I've been on the road nonstop. It's crazy, man. I live out of a suitcase, but it's a two-bedroom suitcase, so it's pretty safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is home? Home is uh Big Bear, California. I live in the mountains down in California. So. Really kind of like out and you have a kind of a unibomber sort of like <laughs> shuffle about you. You live kind of a in a quiet little spot in the it's, woods. It's amazing, man. Yeah. I I got I got a, a cabin and it's all everyone's second home up there. You know, it's like people who have money and then they have second homes. My first home is everybody's second home, so that right. no one else is there, man. It's just me and a bunch of empty houses that if I wanted to steal from I could. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ah. You like coming up here to Seattle? This yeah. is a little bit like that part of California, is it? Kind it's sure, yeah. It's, it's actually you know you get you you elevate yourself from the smog and and uh, and the dust and the. Uh, the trash, and you get some evergreen look and snow. I get snow, man, and it's snow up to my waist, and then I just go down the mountain, and it's summer down there. It's an amazing transition, you know. It's like instead of shoveling, I just say, well, let's just drive down the hill instead, you know. So, so you know, <laughs> that way we avoid having to shovel altogether. But <laughs> the snow does get thick up there, I tell you. It's crazy. There's ski slopes right by my house, and yeah. it's just beautiful. Yeah, oh, so it is, it, when you say second home, it's a resort. It's like a ski area. Yeah, exactly. Ski you know, bunnies. It's a, it's a two-bedroom house, but I think it's up to me how many bedrooms there are, man, don't you? Yeah, because you could decide that anything's a bedroom, right? Exactly. You could yeah. say, this bedroom has an oven in it, man. <laughs> 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 I just bought myself a king-size bed.